to do that, we're back on camera and we're ready. Again, so much intrigue on who would get that final one seed, and we are about to reveal it as we reveal the Seattle 4 bracket and your one seed in Seattle 4, the Stanford Cardinal facing Southern Jaguars or Sacred Heart Pioneers. And this is a Stanford team that stumbled in the Pac-12 tournament, but they are dangerous, they are deep, and they have the experience of being to the Final Four the last couple of years, including a national championship two years ago, led by that young woman, Haley Jones. Cameron Brink having an outstanding year on both ends of the floor as well. They have many shooters, they've got size, they've got depth. Stanford, when playing their best basketball, is going to be a tough out. When you say experience, you mean 99 NCAA tournament wins? Is that the kind of experience you're talking about? That's, that's the yeah, kind. That's okay. Uh, Southern Jaguars or Sacred Heart Pioneers as we check in. Congratulations to the Southern Jaguars representing the SWAC who are looking for their first NCAA tournament win as a conference and Sacred Heart in their 10th season with Jessica Minetti back in the tournament for the first time since 2012. In your 8-9 matchup, we've got Ole Miss taking on Gonzaga, Drea. Oh, I'm excited about this match. I love the 8-9 matchups in general, but we've got to give some credit to Coach Yo at Ole Miss. No Shakira Austin, who was dynamic in the WNBA, no problem. She's got transfers that come in. Maya Taylor, Markeisha Davis, Angel Baker is a bucket. Ole Miss, they're ready to go. And you see Gonzaga, them Bulldogs, they're ready too. Oh, they get the cute factor too. <laughs> Another gritty, but this time from a little boy. We love that. Only West Coast team, by the way, with multiple players averaging over 16 points a game. They are deep. We look at our 5-12 matchup in Seattle 4. Our 4-13 matchup is going to be the Texas Longhorns taking on the East Carolina Pirates. You see Texas there with Vic Schaefer. Always in a blazer. Always in a blazer. He hasn't thrown it yet. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't come off yet. He hasn't come off yet. And Rory Harmon there, your Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Yes, the gritty. Okay, yeah, East Carolina. There's a lot of gritty happening right now. It's, it's basically the narrative of the show, taking on the East Carolina Pirates. 23 mid wins, most since 2009 and 10. They've got oh, a chance. Oh, they're, chance they're, they're win. chancing. They're they the win so far. Yeah, I like that. Uh, we've, I like got, it. we've got a net, a net necklace. They're doing it all. Congratulations. As we look now at our 5-12 matchup in the Seattle 4 region, the 5th seeded Louisville Cardinals will take on the 12th seeded Drake Bulldogs. Okay, Louisville. We've talked about Louisville defensively. What are they like compared to last season? The defense has been something that they have to get going. And the Drake team, that's exciting. Yeah. They can shoot it, but that's going to be good offense against good defense going against each other. And Mikasa Robinson moved into the starting lineup for the Louisville Cardinal, and the defense got better. Was she similar to? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't and how about Drake riding a five-game winning streak? Not exactly starting from the bottom, but they're here. Okay. Uh, as we continue with great, the Elle. bottom of the Seattle Regional Four, I'm just here for the bad dad jokes. It's fine. We take a look now at your 314 matchup. Number three, Duke, taking on number 14, Iona. Another one of those defensive teams, Duke. That's how Carol Lawson has had success in the ACC this season. It's built on the defensive end. All right, we check in now on your 6-11 matchup in the Seattle Four region. Six-seeded Colorado Buffaloes will take on number 11, Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. Charlie has this, and he'll explain a little later as a potential Cinderella story, Middle Tennessee. As we take a look there at Colorado, the Buffaloes, 23 wins, oh. mostly for team 12. MTSU, MTSU is a team that could pull off an upset. Carolyn talked about that Cinderella team. Who could it be? They can shoot it, baby. It could be this team the right Raiders here. The can shoot it. Yeah, they're also riding a 10-game win streak. Shoot or shoot. As we take a look at your 215 matchup in the regional, Seattle regional, two-seeded Iowa Hawkeyes. CP. A lot well, of debate about them being a one seed. Well, Caitlin Clark, she will earn your respect. If you didn't put respect on the Iowa Hawkeyes, giving them a one seed, add a two. They're going to come in. They're going to shoot it. We saw how determined they were when game day went to Iowa City. They're going to carry at, carry that on through the tournament. Those fans were amazing. They, they were those great. Those fans were incredible. So much they're, fun. Yeah, they're absolutely incredible. That year, 215 matchup. And in your 7-10 matchup in Iowa City, number seven seeded Florida State taking on number 10, Georgia. Hi, hi. Look, Coach Abe's got a defense that's really hard for teams to figure out. They, she matches up well. Diamond battles is excitement. And it's not for making buckets, but getting steals for the Georgia Bulldogs. That's her right there standing up, dancing hey. in the middle. Yep, hey. there we go. I said it's great. Hey. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go. 
only team with more appearances in the NCAA tournament, Tennessee. Look at Georgia stand up at your 7-10 matchup as the full bracket has been revealed. Let's take a look at our bracket tips presented by Nissan. Congratulations to all 68 teams. Since the tournament expanded to 64 teams in 94, top three seeds are 335 and one in the first round. That lone loss belongs to one seed at Stanford and fell to 16 seed at Harvard back in 1998. Each of the last 10 titles have been won by a one seed and top three seeds have won all 40 of the national championships.